Welcome back. And today I want to talk to you about one of the craziest, most incomprehensible, but most fascinating books uh, and most brain stretching books that I've ever read, which is uh, this book called Gödel Escher Bach by Douglas Hofstadter, uh, who's an American cognitive scientist, physicist, uh, with a long and distinguished career. He wrote this book in 1979, and it's become a bit of a cult book in the circuit of uh, physics, maths, logic nerds um, who enjoy sort of pontificating about very deep subjects. Uh, and as I said, I really understood very, very little about it. I'm not going to pretend that I got, you know, a massive enlightenment out of it. Uh, I really didn't understand all that much of it, and yet I still found it really very fascinating. So let's have a quick look at what it is. As the title indicates, the whole book is structured around three people. Uh, one is Kurt Gödel, uh, who is a German mathematician and logician. The other is M.C. Escher, uh, who was a Dutch illustrator who's most famous for these illustrations that you see on the uh, rooms of university students, college students, uh, that always show sort of infinity loops and so on. And the third major character here is, of course, Johann Sebastian Bach, the German composer of the 17th, 18th century, uh, who uh, it was considered one of the pillars of classical music. Uh, and so the main theme of this book, as I sort of understood it, uh, was essentially to show uh, the, the theme of recursion and self-reference through the works of those three people, Gödel, the mathematician, Escher, the illustrator, and Bach, the musician. And he, and he demonstrates that the three of them are um, major uh, <laughs> proponents of recursion, of metaphysical, self-referential works, uh, and he makes very interesting connections between uh, the music, the illustration, and the maths. And that's about as far as I understood it, because the book really delves into a huge variety of subjects, uh, ranging from mathematics, logic, genetics, Zen, art, biology, artificial intelligence, coding. Uh, there, there was just a lot that was being covered there. And in every single one of those touch points, he connects, uh, you know, this idea of recursion, of loops, uh, and, and connects it to the work of one uh, or all of the uh, main protagonists, the, the three main protagonists in the novel, Gödel, Escher, and Bach, uh, in a way that I didn't always necessarily understand. And he invents a lot of invents a lot of different languages, a lot of different logical puzzles. Uh, and again, again, let me be very clear, I did not necessarily follow everything that was going on. Uh, so why did I like it? Well, for a wide variety of reasons. Reason number one, uh, it stretched my brain. And uh, there's a, a fourth unofficial character besides um, uh, Gödel, Escher, and Bach. And that fourth character is Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland. And the way the book is structured uh, makes it a little bit more helpful to, to understand what's going on because uh, the introduction to every chapter is a fictitious conversation between uh, the Greek warrior Achilles, who's mentioned so often in the uh, paradoxes of Zeno, uh, and a tortoise, uh, and they speak in a style uh, uh, that is reminiscent of Lewis Carroll, and certainly inspired by uh, Lewis Carroll and Alice in Wonderland. So it's very much a zany, uh, illogical style. We're dealing in a sort of non-reality. Uh, there are all sorts of weird things happening, but those conversations are told in a way that are pretty comprehensible. They introduce a certain theme, a certain problem, uh, and, and throughout that chapter then, that theme, that problem will be examined in greater and greater depth. And, and by the end of the chapter, forget it. It is like, he, unless you have 
a PhD, a double PhD in mathematics and logic, you're not gonna follow a whole lot. I found it that challenging. Um, but the other reason I liked it is because, yeah, it stretched my brain in a lot of different ways. Um, at the beginning of every chapter, you sort of get a glimpse of what is being talked about and it sort of puts the, the cogs in motion in your brain and you start seeing a vast infinite uh, field of possibilities of logical outcomes to what is being proposed and I'm not equipped academically to go to the end of that road but others who are equipped might enjoy that road very much. So there's a lot to do with theory of knowledge, an understanding of meaning, of symbols. There's a lot to do in here with isomorphisms, so the, the equivalence of meanings through symbols. Um, and it's really deep, you know, it, it, it's not just about meaning, but it's about the meaning of meaning and it's not just about knowledge, but it's about the knowledge of knowledge and uh, Again, that's as deep as I can go and and maybe some of you who read this or who have read it can go deeper and and actually follow some of the pretty tough equations that are outlined in uh, This book at the end of every chapter. I mean it basically goes uh, really uh, pretty crazy. Now, it has aged somewhat. You know, there are chapters on genetics and artificial intelligence, for example, where, uh, you know, it, it's sort of almost referred to as, you know, this wonderful new field of genetics. And, and now you know, of course, that we can map the human genome or any genome in, in you know, a microsecond and we can probably clone any organism. Um, but he does introduce, again, the themes of recursion, uh, self-reference, uh, and connects genetics to the music of Bach and connects the music of Bach to some awesome illustration by Escher. So it's all very, uh, very interesting, very well done. Um, so I guess um, what I liked about it and didn't like about it is that certain zany style. And there's a lot of zaniness in it. Uh, and I think he thought it would make the matter more digestible and I think I'd need to think a little bit more about that whether that zany style through the Lewis Carroll type conversations does that help or not help uh, and I think uh, that dimension has certainly contributed to giving the book its cult status it, it, it avoids a certain dryness that you can find in some academic textbooks but it is very, very um, sometimes off-putting, and so I, it wouldn't, wasn't necessarily my favorite uh, piece of the uh, of the whole work. Now, a uh, couple of pieces of advice if you are interested in re reading this, and I don't, I, I, it's not like I recommend it, but I also don't not recommend it. Uh, it it's I'm sort of in a quantum state about this uh, and a Zen state of, of duality, as, as this book would point out. Uh, I, I would recommend it if you are looking for a very, very deep intellectual exercise. And if you're happy to sort of let yourself flow past stuff that you might not necessarily understand, but uh, you you would certainly enjoy, I think, having your brain stretched and and putting your brain through a certain gymnastic, uh, you're certainly going to get that. Uh, as to whether or not one would understand what's happening here, I would say you would need yeah, a, a PhD in maths or logic or coding or artificial intelligence or, or some very high academic level of understanding of science and maths to really fully digest what's going on here. And I didn't. You know, I'm hand on heart, I didn't understand what was happening, but I could still sort of flow through the pages, look at some of the diagrams, enjoy it, and so on. Uh, and that's my second piece of advice is, if you're gonna read this, I would really suggest you read five pages a day, no more. That's as far as I could take it. That's as far as my daily gymnastic could take it. Um, and, and at five pages a day, I could just about try and decipher some of the equations that are outlined. I could just about try and decipher some of the logical problems that are outlined. 
more than that, you're really going to struggle to keep up because it's, it's extremely difficult. So, uh, there you are. I, I enjoyed it despite not understanding it, but I am grateful for, uh, the low rate intellectual exercise that it gave me. Uh, so I'd love to hear from any of you if you've read it, what your thoughts are on it. Uh, if you've read any similar books that are maybe simpler and that you would recommend to others in the community. Um, I'd also love to hear anybody who's got any sort of intro to math or logic that uh, they think would be an interesting stepping stone to this that would be uh, recommended. Uh, but aside from that, uh, I'm now on my last two, uh, two books of the year, uh, and I've got, uh, a week to finish two books. So I'm really getting it at a big, big pace right now. And I'm pretty confident I'm going to finish. Um, and so in the meantime, Merry Christmas to everyone. And, uh, hope you have a fabulous holiday with your friends and family. Thanks a lot.